But this one's a really great one for a MIG welding project. So if you're a beginner MIG welder and you're just trying to learn to do layouts and all that, this is a great one because there's layout and squaring and you can weld and do a little bit of grinding to make your, you know, I ground all the outside welds off just to make it smooth, but you don't even have to. If you get nice pretty welds, just leave them. Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison and thank you for watching. Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. Thanks for joining me again. Um, today's project was to build a rack to hold a whole bunch of these uh, Harbor Freight uh, storage cases. And I probably have, uh, oh, 14, maybe 15 of these. Most of them full from things like rivets or uh, rib nuts, stainless steel, uh, small, like number eights, number tens. Just all kinds of, of stuff that you don't want to mix in with your regular hardware. Or uh, like I also use them for electrical parts. So I have ECM pins and solderless connectors and that kind of thing in them. And uh, they're kind of nice because you can mix and match. You know, you get a whole bunch of small stuff. Maybe you put all that in small bins in one uh, one case. But anyway, I've got them. They're laying everywhere. I can never, you know, track down the one I'm looking for at the time I'm looking for it without going through all of them. So I decided I needed a rack for them. And unfortunately today I lost all of the footage off of this particular camera. So I do have footage of me building it, but uh, we're gonna do an intro and, a, and you know talk about it a little bit, and then you'll see some of the video off of a different camera. What we've got though, it's all cutoffs. I got one long 18 foot long piece that I'd cut something else off of. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a rack um, and I'll take a close up of this. You know, what we're working with is uh, one inch square tube or square tubing, yeah, to make my four uprights and my upper crossbars and then the back and two side lower crossbars. On the front piece, we're just going to use a piece of flat bar so that we can make the first shelf the very bottom. Um, and then we're going to use inch and a quarter angle iron to make the slides where the boxes will slide into. My goal is to have it, uh, I need 50 inches inside to get all of my, my uh, boxes in there, and I'll show you why that is. And uh, I need it to be 13 and a half inches depth total, and I'm looking at 16 and 3 quarter inch on the inside. I drew that in the wrong place. 16 and 3 quarter inside to inside of the two angle irons. So we're going to be, oh, some, let's see, uh, 17, 18 and three quarter plus an eighth of inch. So we're going to be 19 inches total overall width, 19 inches. So these are the storage boxes we're using. Like I said, they come from Harbor Freight. And I'll put a link in the description there. Um, and when I measured these out, so when I measured the box out, it comes out pretty close to what they describe on the label. But they're two and five sixteenths inches tall, 13 inches deep, 16 and a half inches wide. So for a height, we're gonna we're gonna have two and five sixteenths. We're gonna round that up to two and three eighths to leave a little room. We're gonna add an eighth inch for the piece of angle iron that it's riding on, which gets us to two and a half. We want 20 spaces, we need 50 inches. As we build this rack, one of the goals is gonna be to have the ability to build another rack. This one's 50 inches tall, which is, you know, even with it's on casters, we're only talking, you know, a little over chest height. Um, so probably a little under actually. So I want to have the, the plan to be able to add a, an additional rack on top of it should I ever find the need. So as we build the top, we're also going to kind of lay out so that we could use some angle iron. We'll drill some holes so we can put some bolts in there. and. Maybe initially we'll put a piece of wood uh, top on it or a piece of steel that we just bolt down. 
the idea being you could take that off and build another rack that would bolt down then to the top of it so you could extend the height of it. That's just, you know, for future, future proofing it. Try one of these uh, drill taps, and this is for quarter twenty. Well, let's see. I've used them in aluminum and stuff before, but I haven't tried them. In, and I've tried them in thicker steel, which doesn't work. feel like it's going to work in there either. I've broken a lot. I was using a bunch of them in 10, number 10s, and uh, I've broken many, many of them. It's a pain in the butt once you break one in there, so highly recommend not doing it. Um, let's see. Let's figure out what size drill we need for a quarter 20. Okay, so we're going to do a quarter 20 tap, so we're going to drill these with a uh, number 7 drill. of these and this gets put on the the uh, rack the bottom of the rack a couple of these are going to hit some of the other tubes or some of the angle irons so we'll uh, stop there drill them again for any that that uh, cross over into the other tubes and you'll see that in a little bit So I, I tried a couple different ways, and you'll see in the video, I tried a couple different ways of setting my shelves up, or my sliders, and the first one I marked them all with a, a measure them all out two and a half inches, then I marked them all with the with a framing square, and then I was just going to hold them there by hand and, and, and eyeball it and line everything up. Well, after I got about two or three done, I realized they were all crooked, it wasn't working too well. So my next try, I cut those loose. My next try was I came in with a spate with these two little spacers, and then all I did was weld them to this square tube to make a handle out of it. And uh, I thought I had these exactly the same size. As it turns out, they were off just ever so little bit. And so I'd laid out most of one side and realized that they were sloping. But they weren't sloping towards the back, they were sloping towards the front, which was going to cause me a problem. So, and they weren't much, I mean it was about a sixteenth of an inch, but it was, you were noticing it more and more as you got closer to the top. So, I cut them all loose the second time.
and, and readjusted the squares here. And then one of the other things I, I realized as I was doing it was, so I needed to put a little curve on the, uh, on the metal there so that as it fit into the angle for a spacer, it, it clears the thick area here in the corner. So with that done, then I started getting some pretty good spacing. And then I went ahead and made the back one, end up leaving the back one just a little longer. I'm sorry, the front one, ended up leaving the front one a little longer than the rear one so that as they did, they would get a little slope, but they'd slope towards the back. You just need to remember when you make a jig, mark it, you know, which way it's going. So front was this way. So that when you make one side, you flip your jig over to do it the other way and not have a problem with it. Um, with one side slope in one direction, the other side slope in the opposite direction. Once I'd done all that, I got in there and got all, got all the sides welded on. The side rails welded on, well, I just welded them across the top and then the back here I, weld, I put a, just a spot weld at each of the bottom corners just to keep that thing from rolling up ever. So one of the problems I ran into is all that heat putting in there made these sides bow out. It was kind of hourglass shaped. So I got the bottom all set up and square. And you'll see me clamping everything and getting that welded. Well, it was way further apart in here than it should be. So once again, I went back in. I made another piece of angle iron that would fit in here. And then used a strap and ratchet strapped it together until it pulled in tight and I could weld it up. Um, and then I used this piece of half inch square tube to weld all these rails on here so that they would, it basically it gives it a stop and a place to catch the, the uh, back of the box. So then as far as the top goes, I left the four pieces of square tubing open so that if I wanted to add another rack to it, I could make maybe a two foot, you know, could probably put another five or six boxes in another smaller rack. And you would just use like a piece of three quarter inch square tubing, drop down in each one of those, and then basically just use it as a peg so it only needs to go in an inch or two. So it locks it in place and then build the framework out of one by one again. I don't know that I'll ever do that. I like this size and uh, you know, it could get a little taller and it wouldn't be a problem. But as you can see from the video earlier, I used up basically a bunch of scrap metal. I had some new metal that was on an inside rack. The rest of this has been, was actually, all this angle was new metal, at, you know, obviously at one time, but um, not that long ago. It's just, it was at a welding yard um, sitting out in the in the uh, weather for probably a year or two and then it was given to me and I put it on an outside rack and left it sit for another year or two so it's it's probably four or five years old but it was all brand new 10 foot sticks that were given to me just rusty so um, I cleaned up the areas behind like where these two pieces of metal mate I cleaned up the area on the back side with a wire wheel and then Anywhere else, you know, same thing behind the, the half inch here, so that 
the guys can sandblast it before they powder coat it and I don't have to worry about rust building from behind. We have a very dry climate so if it's not out in the weather probably it's not going to rust anymore. But back to the top. Um, in the meantime what I'm probably going to do is make it, take a piece of plywood and cut it about an inch wider excuse me, an inch wider this way or two inches wider this way and only one inch wider to the front so that the back stays flush and just make a plywood top and then I can just screw it down through the top into the steel. And if I ever make an extension, I just pop that off, put it on top of the other one. And if I don't, it's this size. And I would think probably before I make another one, or before I make an extension up, I would just make another one of these so that I could put another 19 boxes beside it. But uh, that's the, that was today's project. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it gives you some ideas if you've got some boxes like this or something else similar laying around. Just need to try and figure out a way to organize them. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you again next week with another project. I've got a little one in mind. Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com. My plan was to put 20 in here. Well, I didn't think about that the top one would wouldn't be able to go in with this bar here. So we only got 19, but uh, I started with 50 inches. Had I gone another, uh, probably another two inches to give it a nice gap here, but at least another inch, I probably could have got one more in here. Um, but it's fine. Um, I'm gonna take this off, have it powder coated at uh, the guys that do all my stuff and then It'll probably be a couple weeks because I'm not going to get them in a hurry to get this done and they happen to be at a busy time of year. Plus I have a couple other smaller projects that I'm going to do that I want to throw in the bundle with it because it always works out the price better that way. I've got casters to go on the bottom and I drilled the holes. You'll see some video of that. We'll see you next week. Have a good day.